Six meters? No, five meters? What? That's crazy. That would be in the room. While low-cost LiDAR might not be great for space marines fighting aliens in the future, right now, for previs and virtual production, it's amazing. I'm Sean Foster, and I have done a lot of 3D modeling in the past with visual effects. And I've been on a quest to automate some of that process. And that quest first led me 10 years ago to find photogrammetry. I went to the SIGGRAPH conference and I saw Weta Digital do a presentation on their computer vision based approach to digitizing props for the Lord of the Rings films. And I was amazed. We, by just simply taking multiple photographs, you're able to then give it to a computer algorithm, which does the Euclidean math for you, and it gives you 3D mesh objects. And that was amazing. I took it back to where I was teaching, and we've used AGSoft, Photoshop, Metashape, uh, Autodesk Recap Pro, and recently uh, Epic just bought Capturing Reality. We're going to use some of that. And it led me to doing a lot of environments and objects, and even giving more talks about that process and writing a small book with a co-author. Now, photogrammetry and LiDAR both have some problems, and I'm gonna talk a little bit about that. Photogrammetry ha and LiDAR has problems with transparency and reflectivity, whereas photogrammetry also has issues with strong directional lights. If the surroundings are too simple or the, you know, you take a bunch of images and you get a ton of high res photos, the upload speed and the processing speed can take a long time. Whereas LiDAR has much fewer problems. Uh, there are some solutions though for dealing with the transparency and reflectivity issue. With transparency, sometimes you can just tape over areas like mirrors uh, with like non-reflective uh, paper, or you can also use matte sprays or powders to take off some of the um, specularity on some objects that are semi-shiny. Um, but for the rest of this talk, I'm going to talk about, you know, basically what is LiDAR. I'll talk about range, accuracy, cost, some of the apps that I tried out, and also file types, because there's a lot of different file types. I'll tell you about the two most common file types that you can use that go right into Unreal. Okay, so first of all, what is LiDAR? Uh, it stands for Light Detection and Ranging. It is classified, it's part of the remote sensing field. And basically what it does is it shoots out lasers and it measures the time of flight for those lasers reflections to come back to the camera. And what's it used for? It is being used in a ton of industries and those industries are growing and even more uses are coming up especially for us, for pre-visualization and virtual production, rapidly 3D scanning an environment. And also if you're using AR driven cameras, it can improve the accuracy of the AR camera. Okay, in terms of cost range and accuracy, on the low end, $400 to like $1,400. I've been using the iPad Pro, but last summer um, the iPad Pro came out with the LiDAR sensor and so did RealSense L515 cameras. There's a growing number of different um, technologies that you can get for low cost. Uh, the range is typically up to about five meters with the iPad Pro. Compared to the high end, we're starting at around 8,000 to 20,000. And that's not bad considering 10 years ago, it was like 75,000 for a piece of equipment. Um, and the accuracy and range of the high end is just much bigger, of course. Uh, 200 to 500 meters with submicron accuracy, like 0.3 with the one that I've listed here. So uh, one thing that I wasn't able to get a specific answer on is what exactly is the accuracy of the iPad? Um, so if somebody in the audience who's watching this says if the information has come to light, please post it in the notes below. I'd love to share that. Okay. Uh, also, I've been on the lookout for what apps best apply LiDAR to the scanning process. And I chose these four apps based on an article that I found in uh, January of 2021. And I'm going to talk about the things that I liked about each app. So with Polycam, I thought it had a really great simple interface and it had a nice estimated time for computing to the cloud. Uh, the 3D scanner app 
had a really, it had a good low and high setting for the amount of fidelity that you are going to be grabbing the details. Whereas the Canvas and the Matterport apps, Matterport has been around for a long time and both of them hook into paid based ecosystems. So they might be useful for what you're doing. Uh, for example, Canvas, you can scan a room and then for like an additional 30 to $50, you can have the company kick out CAD files for you that are cleaned up, which is pretty cool. Um, same thing with Matterport, it's being used all over the place for like new home sales or even, you know, used home sales. Uh, and also just for like the ease of use for like posting uh, right onto the web. We, we used Matterport recently in a project where we were scanning a museum and it was just, it was great, it was really useful. So, but keep your eyes out there. There's more apps that are popping up. Someone just told me about Sitescape. But in terms of file types, there are a lot of file types out there. And there's ways of optimizing because it generates a lot of data. So the computer you're using, you better have enough RAM, um, especially if you're using really dense point clouds. And in, another, in the next video, I'll talk a little bit about optimization strategies. Um, but uh, basically with Unreal, you need to make sure you're turning on a plugin and I'll go over that in the next video. Um, and the two key file types that I'm going to talk about is the XYZ and the LAS file type. Um, I went with the XYZ based on the same reasons that I use the .ma file type for Maya. I use it because it's an ASCII file type and it gives you faster access to the data um, and more access. Whereas the LAS, it's a binary file type. Okay. Um, also in another video, I'm going to go over the ability to not just take a point cloud and drop it into Unreal, but you can also choose to meshify it. Um, and there's a two free uh, resources out there. I'll put in the links below for MeshLab. And um, there's a, a couple others that are out there that are pretty amazing, but a little bit high end for um, reverse engineering some of your point, cl point clouds. Okay, so I wanna tell you to keep your eyes out for uh, the Unreal Roadmap. There are just continuous improvements that have been happening over the last, from 4.23 to now. So subscribe for more Unreal content and I'll see you in the next video.